On the gridiron, the kicking game doesn't always get the love that it should, but there are some great legends of the game back in the day over a century ago, and today we talk about one that's very fitting for St. Patrick's Day on his birthday, and his story is coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com. And what a perfect day on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, to celebrate a football player named Pat O'Day. Well, Pat wasn't Irish. He had an Irish name. I'm sure his family lineage came from Ireland at some point in time. But Pat O'Day was actually from Australia. Yeah, way down under. He was known as the kangaroo kicker, and he was a unique figure in early days of American football. The Aussies football career defies easy categorization, and it's a story that transcends statistics and touchdowns, weaving together tales of sporting dominance and enigmatic life after. He was born in Australia and he excelled in Australian rules football before venturing across the globe to leave an indelible mark in developing the sport of American football here in the late 19th century, early 20th century. O'Day's arrival at the University of Wisconsin in 1896 was a turning point. As we said, he's nicknamed the kangaroo kicker for his unorthodox Australian style drop kicks as he revolutionized the kicking game here in America. His powerful leg produced feats that marveled audiences, including a legendary 62-yard field goal in a blizzard against Northwestern. In that same game against the Wildcats, it's also reported the kangaroo kicker launched a 116-yard punt in poor weather. Pretty impossible to do, but it is because they had the 55-yard field back then. Now, Day's impact wasn't limited to kicking. He excelled as a fullback, showcasing his impressive athleticism and leadership, and his success transcended the playing field, bridging the cultural gap between Australia and the United States. He became a symbol of a growing popularity of American football around the globe, showing the sport's appeal across the world. In one 1899 game, Pat showed some football versatility as he returned a kick 90 yards for a score and then added four field goals to the tally. He was a three-time All-American in United States collegiate football, a team captain, and a key figure in Wisconsin's rise to national prominence. In 1899, O'Day showed his moxie in a game against the mighty Michigan squad of a fielding H. Yost. Both teams entered the final game of the year held on Thanksgiving Day with a single loss. Uh, Michigan's strategy was to take Wisconsin's best weapon, O'Day, out of the game. And the big athletic Wolverine guard named Richard France was the one, the main characters deployed to execute this strategy. And he laid some vicious and on the verge of dirty hits on the Badger star player. Once O'Day figured out France's intentions, the Aussie warned the Michigan guard to stop the activity or there would be trouble. On consecutive punts, France charged O'Day after the boot, quote, like a battering ram, unquote. And on the second of these occasions, O'Day laid his fist across a Michigan guard's jaw, knocking the big man to the ground, sprawling condition laying on the ground. And the ref witnessed it, and O'Day was rightfully ejected from the game. So Michigan got what they wanted, but he had already done enough damage as the Badgers won the contest 17 to five. O'Day on that day had a 35-yard kick, uh, drop kick for point, and he had a punt that sailed over the head, live ball, with that the, his teammates scored upon. However, O'Day's ke- coaching career proved to be more tumultuous. After leading Notre Dame to a winning record in 1899-1901, he was controversially fired for playing against a team in an exhibition game. He bounced around coaching at Missouri and Stanford, uh, but Russell has followed him. Even in 1903, in our book, The World's Greatest Pro Gridiron Team, I told you that he played for a team in Kirkland, Missouri called the Osteopaths. They had a really good team with some big stars there, and they were invited to the World Series of Football, but something fell through that they were not able to go there and play against Franklin and Watertown and and the others. Uh, In 1917, O'Day vanished, leaving behind a trail of speculation. Theories ranged from wanting to escape the football fame to joining the Australian Army in World War I. 
He resurfaced in 1934, living under a pseudonym in California. And while the reasons for his disappearance remain uh, shrouded in mystery, it adds a layer of intrigue to his legacy. Was it the yearning for your anonymity, or the fallout from the coaching world, or something more? Pat O'Day's career might not have been the conventional, but it is significant and undeniable. His pioneered American football kicking was dominant a player at Wisconsin, and he symbolized the sport's burgeoning international appeal. His enigmatic disappearance adds layers of fascination to his story, making him a unique figure in the annals of football history. That's all the football history we have today, folks. Join us back tomorrow for more of your football history. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com.